If you've ever rode on a particularly old electric train, then you're likely to have heard a sound like this. This classic sound is pretty distinct with old electric multiple units with DC motors. I'm here to explain how this sound is made and why you don't tend to hear it anymore. But before you can delve into that field, you must first understand how power is used to move an electric railway vehicle. When electric trains and tram cars were first introduced in the late 19th century, there was little understanding of how to effectively provide adequate torque to the powered axles. Inspired by the recent developments of bicycle gears, many designers would use chain and belt drive methods for power transmission. However, this proved to be ineffective as these methods consumed a lot of space, requiring the equipment to be mounted on the car floor and were susceptible to snapping if too heavily stressed. With the growing popularity of electric tram cars in western nations, the need to overcome these issues was now becoming a serious deliberation. Enter Franklin Sprague, an ex-officer in the United States Navy and a member of the Edison Institute. In 1885, Sprague would devise a mounting which would allow for the traction motor to be contained within the undercarriage of the tram car. This method involved suspending the motor between the bogey frame and the axle, with the energy transferred via reductor gearbox to alter the amount of torque necessary. This technology was applied to new tram cars produced for the new tram lines in the streets of Richmond, Virginia in the United States, which had to contend with gradients of up to 10%. This system was revolutionary, as it provided the supply of electricity through trolley poles, which Sprague devised five years earlier, as well as regenerative braking to feed power generated from the traction motors back to the overhead DC supply system. Primarily for the case of this video, however, it proved the success of Sprague's new motor mounting method, which had come to be known as the suspended drive method. In 1908, Sprague would work with fellow American inventor Elihu Thompson to devise the Paris Metro Sprague Thompson sets to replace the dangerous, poor performing and unreliable Paris Metro M1 units. These Sprague Thompson sets were the first trains to use the suspended drive method. The electric supply would be handled by a bank of resistors which would be controlled by a set of contactors that would be activated by a rotating pneumatic servo camshaft devised by Umont Heidmann. If you want to see a more detailed video explaining how power supply is regulated to the traction motors, I recommend a video by Benno which I have linked in the description of this video. The success of this system in both tram cars and trains meant it was adopted worldwide to power electric railway vehicles due to its simple maintenance requirements and its all-terrain ruggedness. Throughout the 1920s and into the 1950s, railways were now facing a new challenge, the automobile. The binnacle of personal freedom, cars were fast, comfortable and quiet, contrasted with the noise and shoogliness of trains and tram cars. The biggest contributor to this noise was Sprague's suspended drive method, which had inherent failings in this regard. For example, due to space constraints and risks of uneven motion, the gears in many of the suspended drive gearboxes were straight cut. This is where each tooth in each gear is horizontally aligned, and each tooth of one gear can easily mesh with the tooth of the next gear. A sound is made whenever each tooth hits the next tooth, and this creates a sound of ascending pitch as the gears rotate at a higher speed. As the teeth wear down, the space between the teeth increases, leading to a greater area of resonance, which can drastically increase the volume of the gears. To combat the sound, over time some manufacturers opted to use helical gears, as used in motor car gearboxes, which could mesh with the gears at an angle, limiting the noise generated and the wear on the gear teeth. Another problem with the suspended drive method is that as the traction motor is effectively using the axle as a crutch to bridge itself between the bogey frame and the axle in question, unsprung mass is developed. This became a particularly significant problem in countries where the track gauge is small and is a major contributor to track damage and poor ride quality. Some notorious cases of this include the British Rail Class 86, which within the first years of introduction needed to have a change of bogey dampers in order to accommodate this unsprung mass. It would also lead to the 2003 Chancery Lane development on the London Underground Central Line, caused by a tractor motor detaching from the train due to a particularly faulty gearbox. In 1957, Japan would make a major departure from the suspended drive method 
with the development of the Japan National Railways 101 series. The 101 series would transfer power from the traction mode to the axles with the use of a carden drive. This method involved using a rotating carden shaft connected from the traction motor to the gearbox via two universal joints, as had been used in road vehicles. This method eliminated many problems with the suspended drive method, such as the traction motor was now able to be located elsewhere on the train, removing the burdensome unsprung mass, consequently allowing for a much smoother ride and less wear on the tracks. The displacement of the traction motor also meant that the gearboxes could be much larger, allowing for the wider adoption of helical gears, further reducing noise. In the following years, the suspended drive would be phased out on railways with smaller loading gauges, which meant that it was still popular in many Western nations. This was until the early 1970s, with the advent of cheap and durable thyristor technology, first for chopper control on existing DC vehicles, allowing for the fitting of AC motors on railway vehicles otherwise. AC motors were a lot more efficient, a lot easier to maintain and lighter than the currently existing universal DC motors. This coincided with an increase in carbon propelled vehicles, as carbon drives have a greater power transmission capability than the suspended drive method at speed. By the end of the 1980s, it was rare to see new suspended drive powered multiple units. Some of the last suspended drive units in the UK include the British Rail Class 319, designed for the new Thameslink route through London to Brighton and Bedford. As of 2023, suspended drive vehicles are now a relative novelty and a partially antiquated contrast to the more funky, sci-fi sounds of the variable voltage variable frequency drives used in more modern trains. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is not a common style of video for me to make, so please let me know if you enjoyed it. To show this, you can like the video or leave a comment. I'd really like to hear your thoughts and feedback. I'm not a technical mind, and so please let me know if anything I said in the video may be untrue. I will leave a rata in a pinned comment. Until next time, I hope you've learned something new and novel about the sound of old trains.